town council meeting at uh, 712. Uh, all council members are here except for council member Rivero, who's, um, who's out of town, and uh, Mayor Wade, who is on vacation with his family. Uh, the, first, the first item is uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we have a, um, a scout, so please come on down and uh, please rise and join us in the pledge. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. It was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. Wow. So uh, all right. Next, uh, next item is the Chamber of Con Commerce updates. Um, who do we have from the Chamber of Commerce? Omar. 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 Omar, no. Um, you can do dual duty. You can do dual. Nah, he's he's good. Um, it's it's Parker Day's week, so we're all looking <laughs> forward to um, waiting for all everybody to come in and celebrating Parker Days with the chamber. So we appreciate you guys putting on that uh, that event. It's going to be interesting, and exciting. Uh, next item is the um, downtown business alliance update. Yes. Hello, Town Council. Hello. I know most of you know me, but for those of you that don't, uh, I work for the cultural department of the Town of Parker, but I'm actually here tonight because I'm also on the board of the Downtown Business Alliance. So we'd like to give you um, a quick update on one of the things that we're doing. Before that, though, um, you just talked to Omar. Yes, he um, has a, wears a lot of different hats, but he is also on our board, and so I wanted to thank him for being here tonight. But uh, there's a lot of different things that we have in the works, but tonight I want to just talk about the art walks that we have. It's an event that we introduced last year with great success, had hundreds of people coming, and so we've decided to do it again this year. We're bringing them back in June, July, August, and September, so we have four um, on, the, on the calendar. Our first one is June 14th, and these run from 5 to 8 o'clock. They are on Main Street this year. We're, we've decided to consolidate it rather than going down a couple streets. We're going to keep them. They, get, they essentially go from Victorian to Victorian on Main Street. Uh, we have artists continuing to sign up daily, but as of right now, we have 40 of them committed which is really a great turnout. And among those, we've got photographers, we have textile artists, we have 3D artists where they have found objects that they make into art. And then, of course, the more kind of traditional mediums of, of painting and drawing. Um, we've got some high school kids as well, so we're giving artists of um, all walks of life a, a chance to show off their wares. Uh, we also are opening the schoolhouse um, building where we have an exhibit by the Parker Artists Guild, so they'll be showing off their work. And we've got snow cones and popcorn and um, fun treats for the kids of all ages. And then um, we have Elvis and Frank Sinatra and the Irish Step Dancers and other entertainers will be there as well. And then in addition, Vines um, from four to five o'clock is offering a free wine tasting. So gonna be lots of fun. And as I said last year, we had hundreds of people at each one and it was a great time. So that's coming up. We'd love to see you and the rest of the community there. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Carrie? Thank you very much. Seeing none, thank you so much. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thanks. Uh, the next item is public comment. Public comment is a three minute uh, <coughs> limit. Uh, no action will be taken on this on these items. Um, we ask that um, if there is public comment on uh, outside of the scope of the agenda, please do so now. With that being said, I will open public comment at 716. Is there anybody here for public comment? Seeing none, I will close public comment at 716 and go to the next items, reports, items, and comments from mayor and council. We will start with council member Pogue. I didn't attend any other meetings this past week, so with the exception of Denver Housing Authority. All right. And they are working on some changes, so. That's great. Uh, council member Toborg. I don't have anything to report other than I'm looking very much forward to Parker Days this weekend. Great. Council member Williams. I've been out of town. Council Member Lewis. Um, I have also been out of town, and I can tell you, uh, having uh, been in Moline, Illinois for a week, it was really wonderful to be back here where there was no flash flooding going down your street. Uh, the Mississippi River is up above 
uh, the, the height of the dam in one point there. So that was a little bit um, scary. And the flash flood that happened on that I was in on Memorial Day was that that was the, that was a first. So it's really good to be back in Colorado. Um, I didn't have any other meetings since I was gone, but I would like to say that we have um, a previous council member in the audience with us tonight. Uh, he uh, is Dave Aldridge, if you would just wave or stand. There we go. Thank you for your service in the years past, so and we're happy to see you tonight. Thank you. Great. Um, uh, my, my updates, uh, Councilmember Lewis and myself attended a cultural commission uh, oh, meeting. That was two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we, were, um, we also attended the Living Well, Douglas County Senior Outreach Program at PACE. Uh, they had an agenda. Um, when, when I dropped by, um, it was packed. Um, a, a full house of, of seniors looking to get educated and informed on, on the different options out there. That's, um, that's there for them. Uh, attended the Discovery Park concert, Wash Park. It was the first one. Um, it seemed very, um, very well attended and uh, um, very, uh, very enlightening. Uh, I, I also attended the Veterans Day Remembrance Memorial with uh, Councilmember Toborg. And um, again, Steve and Nancy Trevino, thank you so much for doing what you do on a consistent basis. It's it's the 10th annual, and looking to to many more of those. So with that with that being said. Uh, I will move on to the <coughs> consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion and vote. There will be no separate discussion of consent agenda items unless council votes to remove an item for individual discussion. Ordinances on the consent agenda are for introduction only and will not be removed for discussion. With that being said, council, I will entertain um, a discussion or a motion. So moved. I have a motion from Renee. Okay, second. I have a second from Debbie. Um, with with a motion and a second, uh, Council, I, I ask you to, to vote when the box pops up. Uh, the motion passes unanimously, 5-0. With that being said, we will move on to the public public hearings. Uh, the first public hearing is the Jackalope Plan Development Amendment Number 1 Rezoning. Ordinance Number 3.113.1 on second reading, a bill for the ordinance to amend the Jackalope Plan Development Guide and Plan pursuant to the Town of Parker Land Development Ordinance and amending in the zoning ordinance and map to conform there within. Stacy. All right. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members. As just stated, this is the Jackalope Plan Development Amendment Number 1 rezoning. So the subject site is located at the southeast corner of Parker Road and Cockrell Drive. The intent of this rezoning is to allow for a larger range of retail and commercial uses, including allowing for a hardware store and garden center. The intent of the original Jackalope Plan Development was to provide a commercial retail facility with permis permitted uses from retail, office, and restaurant. The proposed PD amendment will expand the uses allowed on the property to include those listed as uses permitted by right within the C commercial zone district within the town, as well as add accessory uses, definitions, and development standards which pertain to a proposed neighborhood hardware store and garden center. So a little bit of history on the property. On July 7th, 1997, town council approved the annexation and zoned the property Jackalope Plan Development. At the same time, Town Council approved the Jackalope Minor Development Plat, which created one lot and one tract. On May 22, 1997, the Planning Commission approved the Jackalope Site Plan to convert the existing Cockrell Stables into an outdoor market and to use the existing buildings for retail sales. That approved site plan is located on the screen in front of you. On April 23, 2003, an administrative site plan amendment was approved to revise the landscaping to include a water feature and hardscape. And then there's a picture of the site from 2000, January of 2000. In addition to this rezoning, the applicant has submitted a site plan amendment and replat to build a hardware store and garden center on the property. This site plan amendment and replat will be reviewed administratively and are not a part of tonight's hearing. So the Jackalope Plan Development was created in 1997 and was written to allow for a variety of commercial uses. The property has been used for commercial purposes for the last 22 years. 
The proposed rezoning will not change the commercial nature of the property, but will expand the commercial uses to be consistent with the town's commercial property vision, while allowing for the applicant's desire to construct a hardware store and garden center. The general land use map within the Parker 2035 master plan identifies this property as being within a neighborhood center character area. The property is represented by a blue rectangle in the center of the map. Neighborhood centers are characterized as retail, office, or service commercial areas designed to serve the needs of the surrounding residents. Based on this analysis, staff has determined that the request for the expansion of the allowed uses on the property allows for greater conformance with the commercial land use under the neighborhood center designation and is consider consistent with the recommendations of the Parker 2035 master plan. So with all that, staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan, provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations. Utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. The project will not result in any additional municipal service costs. The project satisfies the nine criteria required in the land development ordinance to rezone the property. All referral agency comments have been addressed. All public notice requirements have been satisfied. And the Planning Commission held a public hearing on May 9, 2019 and recommended unanimous approval. Therefore, staff recommends that Town Council approve the Jackalope Plan Development Amendment Number 1 rezoning. This concludes the staff presentation. The applicant, Marley Hodgson, is here tonight to give you a presentation, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Stacy. Council, do uh, we have any questions for Stacy before the applicant comes up? Oh. I do. Um, in going through this, I didn't see enough for me to assure that we were providing a buffer to the properties to the south. Can you go into that a little bit, please? Yes. So within the zoning, one of the things that we um, added under the design criteria um, or the development standards is certain setbacks for uses adjacent to the residential to the south. Um, so one of those setbacks is the outdoor to commercial display. Um, that has to be set back, and the outdoor storage has a setback in here of 50 feet from that residential area. In addition, we've set um, all of the setbacks for buildings. We have an additional building setback, so the rear would be that south property line. If there wasn't residential there, it would be 10 feet. Because there is residential, it's 25 feet. Um, and then not a part of this rezoning, but when the applicant comes in for a site plan, we will be looking at the landscape area. And within our land development ordinance, there's a requirement for one tree and five shrubs for a commercial use that's going adjacent to a residential area. And it's one tree and five shrubs per 25 linear feet of frontage. So they'll have to do that as part of their site plan and meet that criteria as well. Okay. Any other buffering as far as berms or anything like that? It's not written into our code that you have to provide a berm. Um, that is an option in the code to provide berms as additional screening. Um, in this instance, it all depends on what the property is doing. So in the land development ordinance, if they're putting storage down there, there was a screening requirement, which you could do berm and fence. Um, the applicant's site plan does not propose any storage down on the south side of the property. That will be more of their nursery area. So they'll have a lot of trees and stuff. Although they are for sale, they will be located at that part of the property. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Stacy? No? With that, would the applicant like to come down and make a statement? Name and address, please. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Marley Hodgson, and I'm one of the principals with the Big Toolbox in Highlands Garden Center. Uh, I'm also the managing member of uh, Jackalope Properties LLC, which is developing the property. Um, 8080 South Holly Street in Centennial, uh, 80122. Um, thank you for allowing me to address the council. Um, and I want to say thank you also to the staff, to Stacy and Bryce and everybody else. They've been very helpful in getting through this process. It's not something that I do every day, so um, it's been invaluable to have their, their guidance. <clears throat> uh, as Stacy outlined, um, we're proposing an amendment to the existing PD so that we can build and operate a second location of our big toolbox in Highlands Garden Center. Uh, our first location has been operating for over 40 years on Holly, uh, just north of County Line in Centennial. We're a family-owned business. Um, it's myself, my wife, and my father-in-law. Um, we're the owners. Uh, we have five divisions, uh, and we're really known for great customer service. That's what we've built and staked our reputation on all these years. Not just customer service, but providing 
services for the communities around us that aren't necessarily provided by big boxes and, and other chains. Um, we have five divisions, the first of which is an ACE hardware store. Um, we carry all sorts of cool stuff from uh, Honda and Steel to Festool to Yeti to, I could go on for a long time, but we really try to specialize in um, good, fun merchandise that you may not find in, in a lot of the big boxes. Um, secondly, we have a Highlands Garden Center. Um, that's sort of our pride and joy. Um, we've been doing this for a long time. We have master gardeners on staff, certified horticulturalists. We do everything from trees to annuals to uh, ponds. We have a big pond department and one of the biggest in the area. Um, sell fish and, and you name it. So we um, and hard goods as well. So that would be pottery and um, things to help you with your landscaping and, and yard and garden. Um, thirdly, we have a lawn and sprinkler center, which is pretty unique. One of the largest lawn and sprinkler centers in the region. Uh, we specialize in underground sprinkler uh, repair, advice. We design uh, sprinkler systems. We We've got, a, in our current department, we've got, I don't know how many roots hanging from the ceiling with sprinkler parts going through them. So any which way you can ruin a sprinkler system, we've seen it. Um, so we like to help out both um, contractors and, and residential businesses, and residential folks, sorry. Um, then we also have a rental and repair center. Those are our fourth and fifth divisions where we do, uh, we rent everything from hand tools and some party supplies to lawn mowers, et cetera. Uh, and then we also uh, small motor repair. So we are uh, steel gold certified, uh, Honda Premier uh, service, as well as uh, Toro Master service dealers as well. Uh, so that's just a quick overview of what we do. Um, and, uh, you know, to keep it short, one of the things that we really like is we like to be a part of the community. We've done that for a long time. We like to give back to the community, not just by providing stuff that the community needs and not just the existing community, but surrounding communities. Uh, but we also like to be a part of it in terms of uh, outreach. So we're constantly supporting uh, various local causes, whether they be scout troops or little baseball leagues, you name it. We try to get um, as many of our customers satisfied that way as well. And lastly, um, providing jobs for the community. Um, when at maturity, three to four years down the road, we expect anywhere from 100 to 130 jobs. Some of those are part-time, some of those are full-time, um, some of them are seasonal. But uh, importantly, not only do we provide full-time jobs, uh, we also provide jobs for uh, folks who are semi-retired and want something to do 10, 15, 20 hours a week, and also first-time jobs. Uh, for high school and college kids, those are really important um, to have a source of those, so we are a good source. And um, that's it. Thank you once again for letting me address the, the council. Thank you very much. Council, do we have any questions for the applicant? Oh, I just tell you, I'm looking forward to having you come to town. I've shopped at your store when it was on Havana for years. And I'm looking forward to the time I can go into your store and pick up a single screw. Mm. <laughs> we have that happen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? So just echo where Cheryl is. I'm, I, I snuck over because I'd never seen the store, so I snuck over this weekend. And I'm a hardware store nerd. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic store. Thank you. And I could have stayed and looked at the trees wrapped around sprinklers all day. That's fantastic. <laughs> really looking good. forward to it. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks. Um, with that, um, let's open it up for public comment. Does anybody have public comment on this item at uh, 731? Hey, good evening. Um, Ty Aslan, 5228 Craftsman Drive. And you two sort of stole my thunder. Uh, it's okay. I but you live on Craftsman Drive. I mean, how cool. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even put that together. But um, I, I, I do want to say I, I drive Parker Road every day, whether it's for work or taking my daughter to uh, competitive cheerleading. So if anyone wants a debrief on that, it's, uh -huh. it's, a, it's an obligation. But uh, every time I drive by that location, I feel as though it's it's twofold. One of it's self-fulfilling. I'm a I'm a really bad do-it-yourselfer, and so for those of you that have been up and down Parker Road trying to do it yourself, um, you don't always. There's a time and a place for big box, and I think we have plenty of them. But what this will provide is more local um, and guidance, and I think a lot of us are sort of yearning for that in the Parker in the Parker area. Um, the other thing is from a property owner. What we don't want, <clears throat> or we want to, you know, be careful of, is is an, a property where there's not a proven track history. And I would say, 
uh, 40 years, Colorado owned, family owned, is exactly what we need on the uh, on the Parker corridor. Um, I think it's a, it's a great uh, add to our community. So with that, and a longtime customer as well. My first Thank steel you. weed eater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your Thank name. you very much. Anybody else for public comment? Hi. My name is uh, David Ardell. I live at 4893 Sonata Place. Um, so I live in uh, Pradera, so on the south, south end of town. And when I first learned about this uh, project, we were, uh, I was excited about it. I talked to my neighbors about it. Everyone's very into their gardens and, and their homes and uh, home improvement. Uh, I think the location of it for, for us, we try and come into Parker as much as we can for all the different services and everything we need. Sometimes it's more convenient to go into Castle Rock, uh, unfortunately. But uh, so like everyone else said, the, uh, um, uh, the big toolbox, I think, from the garden center and the hardware and the location of it and having some more services maybe down or some things available to us down uh, on that end of town would be, uh, would be fantastic. Um, what Marley said about uh, um, the customer service, and I, I've known Marley for, for a period of time, and um, what he would do, he would, he would make sure integrating it into the community. Um, and I've been to the other store, the customer service, they know you by name, um, so it's very neat. Um, and he said in three or four years, uh, we'll have a certain amount of jobs that need to be filled, and my daughter will be about 16 about that time, and she'll be needing a job. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Anybody else for public comment? Uh, my name's Jim Yates, uh, 20047 East Hatchet Ranch Place. I live in Robinson Ranch. Um, Two houses back up to the southern border property line of the project. I'm one of them. Um, I'm here in support um, for all the reasons that everybody has stated, but a couple of more, but not positive things. Uh, what I'm very thankful for, it's not a gas station that I don't have <laughs> lights in my bedroom. I'm thankful that it's not a strip center with noise and congestion and all those things. I'm thankful that um, it's not a barbecue joint. It's not a hamburger joint. I don't have to smell french fries for the rest of my life. Those things matter. Um, that's why this is such a perfect fit for us. Um, we've always wondered when it was going to happen. And when I found out about the project, as me and my neighbor, Dave Dillon, the other people that back up to it, um, are just so thankful that we have a quality family-owned business that's here for the neighborhood, it's here for the community, and I just support it every which way I can possibly do. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, we will close public comment at 7.35. I'd like to just make a few more comments before I turn it and ask for a motion. Um, the Big Toolbox seemed to me, it seemed like a, a regional customer service center. Um, growing up here, uh, if you couldn't get it at Hal and Lois C. Greer's hardware store, uh, you went up, uh, up the street to Holly and County Line and uh, found the Big Toolbox, because they, they had it. So um, you know, I'm thankful that they're coming down south to join us. Um, it's kind of bittersweet um, being here. Cockrell Stables was sort of that that point of declination. Um, if you were trying to give people directions to get to South Parker, um, you have to sort of identify that that's the uh, stables, that red barn on the on the left. If you've gone, if you've passed that, you're almost there. If you're getting to the Pinery, so um, you know. Again, with with that, um, I, I guess we're transitioning to something new and something well received, so hopefully um, they can kind of continue forward successfully. So that's what we all hope for. And with that, Council? I move to approve ordinance number 3.113.1 on second reading. I second it. We have a motion from Cheryl and a second from Jeff. Council, uh, when the box appears, please vote.
Motion passes unanimously, 5-0. Five, five With that, uh, on to item eight, ordinances. Uh, item A, uh, ordinance number 9.286 on second reading. A bill for an ordinance to approve the intergovernmental agreement between the Town of Parker and the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas regarding cost sharing for the Dronsfelt Road Extension. Chris. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is, uh, as you stated, a uh, intergovernmental proposed intergovernmental agreement with uh, Douglas County regarding the Dransfeld Road Extension. A little background, uh, the town has been contemplating the extension of Dransfeld Road south of 20 Mile over the Cherry Creek area for well over a decade. Uh, it's a very important piece of our roadway network in the overall Parker area plan. Um, right now it's over approximately about two miles from Main Street to Hess to have another crossing of Cherry Creek. So again, it's important to have this grid of roads. It's so important for a community to survive and thrive. A portion of this proposed roadway extension is located within the unincorporated, within unincorporated Douglas County. And so that we really needed to get Douglas County's buy-in on this project because we will have floodplain impacts. And you may ask yourself, why is that important? Well, to sign off to get the, anytime you put a bridge crossing a drainage way, you're gonna have floodplain impacts. And uh, we need Douglas County to sign off on the uh, conditional letter of map revision that'll be required for this project because of the unincorporated pocket that's there right now. And after several years of discussion, um, Douglas County is ready to move forward with this. Kind of a vicinity map of what we're talking about. Um, the intersection of Dransfield and 20 Mile Road is there uh, south of uh, Target and the Walmart area. This would be an extension uh, across Cherry Creek and it would actually tie in uh, at Salisbury North property. And uh, in the area in blue up there is a, there's a piece of Motzenbacher that's currently under construction. And you'll see the new intersection there, Motzenbacher and Todd, and this is all part of a, a long-term plan that was put in place 20 years ago as far as the alignment of Motzenbacher and Todd. Um, so this is again an important uh, connection north-south and it'll also serve east-west in the community. A little bit for, more on the background, the IGA basically it's for conceptual preliminary design. It'll get us through the conditional letter of map revision. Each entity has put up $125,000 uh, for a total effort of $250,000 for this first step in this process. Be split 50-50 on the costs. Um, we are going to utilize our, uh, each one of our entities is going to use our on-call engineering list to basically select up to six professional engineering firms to prepare proposals, which we'll do a qualifications-based selection to find the best team to uh, advance this preliminary conceptual design up to the conditional letter of map revision. Now, that's a big milestone, and people ask why it's so important, because that process can take over a year from when you submit it to FEMA to get that approved. And we're anticipating the completion of this preliminary effort by a, a year from now, basically July of 2020. And any future advancement of the design or construction will take additional um, intergovernmental agreements to make it happen. Again, this is just a conceptual preliminary effort in this IGA. And uh, with that, uh, an ordinance is required, required to approve this IGA. And Douglas County Commissioners are scheduled to review the proposed IGA later in June. They were, they, the staff asked that we approve it first. We're making the first step and uh, look forward to uh, providing them a signed IGA if we can uh, later this week. With that, I'll answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Council, any questions? No. Uh, Chris, I, I have a couple. Um, ha have we purchased any land at, at this point for for this this project? <laughs> Sure. Uh, the only property that we've actually purchased is Salisbury North property mm -hmm. um, on the south side of Cherry Creek. Okay. So that's been purchased and the town's had it in our, in our, in our, I can't inventory. think of the right word inventory. for it. Inventory. Inventory, inventory of yeah. land. I was going to say stockpile, but that's not the right <laughs> word for it. But yeah. Um, with that, we have not acquired any additional land. We've started dialogue with the property owner there south, uh, Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. Uh, about this uh, roadway alignment. Um, he's in support of it as well. Um, it, it's a benefit to him, and he's excited to get this IGA rolling um, so that we can start this process and, again, ultimately get to the, the CLOMER process, the conditional letter of map revision, which is a, 
a very important milestone to, to advance this design. So it, it sounds like from a construction standpoint, we're probably years away? Uh, it depends on funding. Um, this is a very expensive project. Um, the preliminary, some preliminary estimates I've seen is uh, 16 to $20 million. This will be the longest bridge, anticipated to be the longest bridge we have in Parker because we do not cross the floodplain perpendicular. We cross it at an angle and it'll be a very expensive structure to build and there's gonna be significant um, other improvements to make this uh, road a reality. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so it, it, it does sound challenging. It does sound we have, this is the very beginning of a long and winding process. C correct, right. correct. I mean, it would be, uh, John, if you were to ask me, everybody asks me, when are you gonna build it? Mm -hmm. As soon as is probably four to five years, truthfully, to get money to line up for this project. It's a very expensive project, and you have to ask yourself in our CIP budget, what are you not going to do to make this project a reality? Yeah. Also, the other benefit is we're, we're trying to create a parallel route to Parker Road, which this this kind of piece would would sort of help us, help us with that so we can have another option to Parker Road that would... Um, be available to citizens. Correct. So. It, it creates not only a north-south, but an east-west connection that we really need in this community. Um, you think about Crowfoot Valley coming up, becomes Motzenbacher, which would become Dransfeld, which would create a parallel road to Parker Road. Mm -hmm. And it also uh, allows some uh, connectivity to the southwest quadrant of the town, which is our last major undeveloped portion of the community. Great. Thanks, Chris. Except for that oh. one curve. <laughs> What, the, uh, mm. the curve coming up? Is that what you're... No, yeah. The one over here on the Matzenbacher side. Do um, you want to ask a question about that? Ooh. Okay. All right. <laughs> he knows. Uh, uh, with no more questions, we will open it up for public comment at 744. Is there anybody here to give public comment on this matter? Seeing none, we will close public comment at 744. And council, I will um, entertain. I addition. will move to approve ordinance number 9.286 on second reading. Second. We have a motion from Cheryl, a second from Renee. Council, when, when the um, dialogue box appears, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Next item, um, item B, ordinance number 3.343, second reading, a bill for an ordinance amends section 13.04.150 of the Parker Land Development Ordinance concerning the rezoning of areas from all of their zoning districts to PD plan development. Bryce. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, members of council. As noted before you tonight is an ordinance regarding uh, requirements for plan development. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is to establish minimum sizes for new plan development zone districts. A new minimum sizes will only apply when rezoning a, a straight zone district. So think commercial, light industrial in our land development ordinance uh, zone to a plan development. This will not apply to amendments to existing plan developments such as the Jackalope earlier. earlier. Currently the town is highly dependent on plan development zone districts. It's one of the town's goals through the separate LDO modernization project to reduce the dependence on planned developments, um, which will reduce administrative activities and create consistency in outcomes. The code currently has no minimum size requirements for planned development zone districts. This proposed change would require a minimum of 10 acres where rezoning a straight zone district to a planned development and a minimum of four acres when consolidating multiple districts into one planned development. An example is up there on the screen where we have multiple small zone districts in an area. Um, so it would have a reduced size limit where you're consolidating those districts. On May 9th, 2019, Planning Commission held a public hearing and recommended unanimously that town council approve an ordinance amending the land development ordinance regarding rezoning properties to plan development zone districts. That concludes my presentation. As always, I'm available for questions. Thanks, Bryce. Council, any questions for Bryce? Yeah, what is the basic premise for doing this? What, what does it do for the town? 
So right now the town has over 80 planned developments. Um, they're uh, sometimes a challenge to administer, a ch uh, challenge for the public to understand. In the middle of our LDO modernization, we're looking to reduce um, the number of new plan developments. So this um, basically is a, an opportunity to um, stop rezoning properties to plan developer right now. So it, it will um, uh, prevent us from, I shouldn't say prevent, but it will re reduce the number of increase in plan developments. I don't know if I explained that really well. So I guess the other question on that then would be, what are the actual changes within the plan development? Are you, yeah, I know you're looking at the land uh, development ordinance, but with this particular action, what kind of changes are you actually looking for outside of square footage? So, so for this action, it's just the minimum square footage. Through the bigger LDO process, we're looking at um, creating zone districts that align better with our master plan so that we are not creating customized zone districts. Okay. Thank any, you. Any other questions, Council? No? Uh, no with no questions from Council, I'd like to open up to public comment um, at 7.48. Is there anybody here to make comment on this item? Seeing none, we will close public comment at 7.48 in Council. Um, I'm, I move to approve ordinance number 3.3. Four three on second reading. Second. We have a, a motion from Debbie, a second from Anae. Uh, council, when we have direction, please vote. Hmm. <clears throat> motion passes <coughs> unanimously. Uh, the next item, item C, ordinance number 9.264.1, second reading. A bill for an ordinance approving the First Amendment to intergovernmental agreement between the Town of Parker, Colorado, and Anthology West Metropolitan District numbers 5 and 6. Kristen. Uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Uh, at the last council meeting, the Town Council approved a First Amendment to the Consolidated Service Plan for Anthology West Metropolitan District's numbers five and six, it increased the debt limitation in the service plan. Uh, we currently have an IGA uh, with those districts and this ordinance would approve a first amendment to that intergovernmental agreement to conform with the changes that were approved in the service plan amendment. Great, um, council, any questions for Kristen? Seeing none, uh, I will open up for public comment at 7.50. Is there anybody for public comment on this item? Seeing none, I will close public comment and council entertain a motion or further discussion. I move to approve ordinance number 9.264.1 on second reading. Second. I have a motion from Renee, a second from Debbie. Council, when we get direction, please vote. Item passes four to one with the no vote being Council Member Pogue. Next item, ordinance number 9.290, second reading, a bill for an ordinance approving the agreement regarding final design and construction of fee and lieu drainage and flood control improvements for Lemon Gulch upstream of Crowfoot Valley, agreement number 18-12.24. Project number 107087, by and between Urban Drainage and Flood Control District and the Town of Parker. Jacob. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, members council. The item you have before you tonight is an intergovernmental agreement between the Town and Urban Drainage and Flood Control District for design of improvements to Lemon Gulch and the Lemon Gulch tributary um, on the Hess Ranch or Looking Glass property. Uh, the town has obtained the funds from the developer and will transfer to urban drainage through this intergovernmental agreement in the amount of $383,939 to fund the, fi the final design of the improvements to both Lemon Gulch and the tributary. The town's stormwater budget for 2019 does have this project included in the CIP with the offsetting revenue provided by the, de the developer. 
To orient yourselves, uh, the road on the right-hand side is Crowfoot Valley Road. Lemon Gulch follows Crowfoot Valley Road on the west side, flows north, and then under Crowfoot Valley Road to the east. And the spur that you see there is the tributary to Lemon Gulch. Both of these are located within the property um, that will be developed. Front Range Communities has made application to the Town of Parker for the Hess Ranch or Looking Glass Development. Lemon Gulch and the Tributary are located on the property as I mentioned and are required to be improved um, and stabilized in accordance with the Town Code. The Town and Urban Drainage have determined that in this case a cash in lieu payment for the design and construction of these improvements is in the best interest of both entities. And uh, just to give you an idea of what Lemon Gulch looks like out of the, there on site, uh, the main concern for us are steep banks in the sandy bottom channel. Um, as soon as uh, developed flows from the development uh, start flowing through here, it, it is very susceptible to becoming unstable. So with that, uh, with this intergovernmental agreement, we anticipate design to start this year, be completed in 2020 and the design will include a contractor through the urban drainage project partners approach and the construction costs through this design will be determined um, and provided by front range communities um, through their additional agreements and obligations with uh, development through their subdivision improvement agreements <coughs> this agreement with urban drainage will be amended to include that contribution from the developer in 2020 once the construction costs are determined and both the town and urban drainage have this capital improvement project identified for funding consideration both this year and next year uh, with the offsetting revenue by the developer again. So with that, this project will provide an engineering design for the stability of Lemon Gulch and the Lemon Gulch tributary. It will be eligible for urban drainage maintenance assistance in the future. It provides stable channels through the segment one of the Hess Ranch or Looking Glass property. And with that, staff recommends approval of ordinance number 9.290. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Jacob. Uh, Council, any questions for Jacob? Just a historical comment. Um, in the past, that area was known for quicksand. Is that part of the soil stabilization that you're looking at? They have provided geotechnical reports out there. I haven't seen anything um, with quick uh, soils or anything like that, but that's an interesting thing to take a look at for sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, I will public comment at 754. Is there anybody here for uh, public uh, comment uh, on this item? Seeing none, I will close public comment at 754 and council additional discussion or a motion. I move to approve ordinance number 9.290 on second reading. Second. I have a motion from Debbie, a second from Renee. Council, when we receive direction, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is ordinance number 5.28.25, second reading, a bill for an ordinance to amend chapter 5.02 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning 3.2 beer and changing the reference from town council to special licensing authority in the Parker Municipal Code where appropriate. Jim. Uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. The uh, purpose of the proposed ordinance uh, that's in front of you is to address uh, two matters. Uh, the first is the change in the law concerning 3.2% beer, essentially to make all beer equal. And then the second is to update the town code to make clear that the special licensing authority handles all liquor matters based upon a prior delegation by the town council. Uh, with regard to 3.2 uh, beer, uh, the Colorado Beer Code no longer includes 3.2 beer in the definition of what is fermented malt beverage. That provision went into effect on January 1st of this year. As a result of this change, retailers such as grocery stores and convenience stores, which were pre previously limited to the sale of 3.2 beer, can now sell full strength beer. Um, additionally, there was changes made to the code just to make it clear that it's the special licensing authority that handles these matters, not the town council. And then finally, on April 18th of this year, the Special Licensing Authority passed a motion recommending that the Town Council approve the ordinance that's before you this evening. Great. Thanks, Jim. Uh, council, any questions for Jim? Okay. Thank you. Um, with no questions up here, I will open up for public comment at 756. Anybody here to, uh, for public comment on this item? 
seeing none, I will close public comment at 757. And Council, I'll entertain further discussion or a motion. I move to approve ordinance number 5.28.25 on second reading. Second. I have a motion from Debbie, a second from Renee. Council, when we receive the electronic box, please vote. Motion passes unanimously and with no other business before town council, I will adjourn the meeting at 757.